everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a really good week so far. If you're new here, hello, thanks for stopping by. Check out the channel. I do all sorts of things on this channel, fashion, lifestyle, vlogs, even a bit of Disney, because I love Disney. Basically, I just love sharing my hobbies and my adventures with you. So if you like what you see and you want to see more, then please do hit that subscribe button. But anyway, today's video is, I guess, something a little different. So I'm here relaxing on my sofa, just kind of chilling out, and I really wanted to film this video because today is World Sight Day. So it's an international event, it happens once a year, and it kind of focuses on like um, eye health awareness and basically all things to do with sight loss and that sort of thing. Um, as many of you know, I am visually impaired. I haven't been able to see since birth. So I just thought I would bring you this video, basically just to talk a little bit about my condition, kind of, yeah, my, my condition, just the sorts of things that I can and can't see, can't really see much, so I'll tell you that now. Um, but yeah, I just thought it'd be really nice to talk about it, because I don't think it's something that I've really, really talked about much on this channel at all, so I thought it'd be good to do that. And then I also think that I get a lot of questions and some people think, oh, this is a really silly question, but like they're really curious about how I do something. So I wanted to kind of share a few of those questions with you and just take you through kind of how sometimes things work a little differently for me or how I get around things. Because at the end of the day, I think it's really important to like discuss these things and to ask these questions. Because if you don't, then you'll never know. And like, it will just become quite awkward. And then from that, people might make all sorts of assumptions. So I just want to kind of bring you this video to just, I don't know, just to kind of get it out there and hopefully to like break some of those assumptions and show that actually things aren't always so different or as complicated as you might think they are. So a little bit about my condition. So as I say, I've had this since birth. It is a very rare condition, so I, there isn't much information available out there. Um, because it is quite rare and there are lots of different degrees of it but I think mine is one of the most severe I think if not the most severe I don't even know um so basically I have a condition called Leber's amaurosis I have no idea how to spell that but I will look it up and put it on the screen now um but this is basically a condition um that affects my optic nerve so basically the optic nerve, which I'm not a scientist by the way, I'll say this now, um, the optic nerve which basically like carries a signal to the brain and that makes you able to see, but basically mine is not working or at least it's very, very weak so it's not, it doesn't give me really any useful vision because basically it just doesn't want to, I don't know why, maybe I just can't be bothered, I don't know, but that's just the way it is so we just get on with it. Um, so I can't really see anything apart from like I have light perception but that also can vary so sometimes I have quite good light perception sometimes I feel like I don't have as good light perception I don't know why that varies but it does like I, I used to um, when I was growing up have lots of tests and things and they're still very much like researching this condition so I don't know much about it and to be quite honest I don't I don't tend to sort of dwell on knowing much about it because I'm just who I am now and I'm very used to this and I don't know any difference. So, it, you know, if they want to do some research and they want me to be involved, then that's great. But, you know, I'm not going to like sit forever looking on the internet for, for like updates or developments or more about it because I don't know. All I know is my haunting nerve doesn't really work, so I can't really see. Um, but yeah, so that's basically that. So yeah, that's just a little bit of background about my actual condition. As I said, I'm not going to go into the science too much because I'm not a scientist. I am mainly a musician, so I wouldn't know. Basically now, I just wanted to kind of go through, because people are like, oh my gosh, okay, so you can't see. So like, what, how, what do you do? Like, how do you do stuff? And that's absolutely fine to think that. Like, you know, it, it's... If, if you don't know how this feels or you have you don't live with sight loss or you don't even know, you know you don't know anyone who lives with sight loss then it's very normal I guess to think how on earth would th you know like because you can't imagine yourself in that position because obviously you're used to living one way but I'm used to living this way and that's fine um 
So uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk through some of the questions and sort of the observations that people make. So my first thing is, when I tell people that I can't see, that I'm blind or visually impaired or however you want to like say that about yourself, I, I, I'm quite easy with labels, I don't particularly mind. I usually just say I'm sorry, I can't, I can't see, but obviously I don't mind. Um, so people will go, oh, oh no, that, or like, oh, I'm sorry, or oh, I'm sorry to hear that, or that's a shame, or oh, it must be really hard. Well, to be honest, no, just because, you know, thank you for your sympathy, thank you for thinking of me, and that you think it's a shame. Uh, but actually, it, it's not, because I don't know any other way of living, this is the only way that I've lived, so for me it's very normal, and I don't see it as like a a fault or a problem to me it's just a characteristic it's like part of my personality it's part of you know some people look a certain way some people do this that and the other and that's just me so thank you but it's not really a shame because i don't know any different um so yeah that that is one of them another question that i get asked is but then how do you like, you know, how do you read? Like, how do you write? How do you, oh my gosh, what do you do for like going on the computer? Like, can you use Facebook? Yes, I can use all of those things. I just found a way around it. There's brilliant technology out there. So I basically have a couple of options. So I could use Braille. So um, yeah, I can read Braille and that is, uh, well, you'll see it now on the screen, me reading Braille. Um, it's basically like a system of dots that uh, so it's like different combinations of dots to form letters So I read that with my fingers. I can also write in Braille But actually I don't tend to do that now because Braille takes up so much room um, It's ridiculous like if I was reading like uh, a book Some of them could be like ten volumes long for just one little book And so like I won't have room in my house if, to live if I kept getting Braille So that's kind of now been replaced for me um, by computers because I use a screen reader. So I use an Apple MacBook, MacBook Pro, and this has a built-in screen reader software called VoiceOver. So this is how I touch type. And then this is how I read back what I've written. Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. And yeah, I just, um, I can send emails, I can browse the internet, I can basically do most things using that screen reader. I can go on Facebook, all that sort of stuff, so I'm not missing out there. I also have my phone, which is a regular iPhone. Uh, mine is an iPhone 12 mini, and that has a built-in screen reader, again, that you can switch on and off called VoiceOver, the same as the Mac. So I want to check my messages because I've got a new message. Messages, 600 messages. Message, record, click, click, mess, apps, camera, message, dominate, PM. So that's how I read my texts. So I'm able to use that. So that is really good. So yeah, I don't miss out on that. Um, another thing is that people often think, oh, if she can't see, then she's not wanting to, you know, go to the cinema or she might not watch so much TV. Also, I get people saying like, instead of have you seen this film, like, have you heard this? And I'm sorry, but I that's weird. I can't, I can't grasp that. Like, just say, have you seen it? Because, I don't know, it's just all the same. It's what I'm used to. Um, so yes, I watch TV, arguably too much TV. Um, I love Netflix, I love Disney Plus, I love all that good stuff. And I use audio description, which can be turned on for most, well, a lot of programs, it's getting a lot better now. Uh, some of the programs still don't have it, but I'm not one of those people that if it doesn't have audio description, then I definitely won't watch it because before audio description came out, I was used to just kind of watching stuff and being able to follow it. So I, I still do love watching it, but obviously if it has audio descriptions, so basically telling me what's going on and that's even better. It works particularly well for action films, so I can do that. Another question people ask me is, oh, you know, how did you go to school? Like, did you go to, in fact, I did have someone ask me once, like, did you go to school? Yes, I did go to school. Um, so I went to school and to university and I have a PhD. So, you know, it's, it's, it's doable. Um, so I actually went to mainstream school all the way through and like primary, secondary, and then university. Um, this is not to say that like, you know, I am against schools for like 
for the blind, for visually impaired people, not at all. Um, I think they can be, you know, really good. Um, and it's and it's whatever's best for the person. But at the time, we just thought that the mainstream route was my the best route for me. So that's what we did. And I had a really good time, made lots of lovely friends. I just kind of integrated really smoothly. And I know that this might not be the same experience for everyone. And I should say that these experience that experiences, can't speak, that I am talking about here are my experiences and obviously everyone's experience is different and some people might have had a, a, a better time, some people might have had more challenges, but this is just what I did. So um, yeah, so I got on well at school and university. Some things were difficult at university because like I had to do a lot of reading, so that had to be converted to like electronic files. Uh, that I could then read on my computer with my screen reader, which took longer. So sometimes I had to have extensions. And for me, that was quite difficult because I didn't want to be behind everyone else. I wanted to be in the same, you know, doing the same as everyone else because that's just what I'm like. But sometimes you do have to accept that things do take longer. And, you know, just embrace those challenges because what's the point? You know, like you, you want to get on and you want to do the best you can. And sometimes to do the best you can, you do have to be a little bit easier on yourself or you know just take a bit of extra time so that's what I did so yes I could go to school so another question that people ask me and this is an interesting one is how do you get around you know how do you get from place to place do you manage to get out is how some people phrase it yes I definitely managed to get out um, now this is very different for everyone who is visually impaired. I think people will have their own ways of getting around, people will have their own thoughts about how visually impaired people should get around, but this is how I choose to get around and it's how I've always done it. So I am very lucky <clears throat> that I have a large network of friends and family who I absolutely love and who will always help me to kind of get from place to place. I also have some PAs which actually are my friends, which is super nice as well. Um, so they help me get from place to place. And yes, this is not me at my most independent. Um, and actually some people would say, well, do you not find it frustrating because you know, you can't have the same amount of flexibility as you might be able to if you're on your own or, or what if you have to get to this, this and this place. But we always manage to sort something out. And actually it makes me feel a lot better knowing that I'm not completely on my own and I have had a couple of bad experiences. So to know that I can be with someone just makes me feel better and also makes me enjoy or concentrate on whatever I'm traveling to or whatever I'm traveling for um, a lot better if I know that I've got someone with me. So that's what we do. And another question that I get asked is, oh, like, do you, how do you do your shopping? Like, how do you choose what to wear? Like, how do you know what colours look like, you know, all that sort of thing. I absolutely love fashion and actually I think it's really important for me to say that just because people just don't know and like they think, I don't know, some people have like a perception of like, oh, do you just wear like all the same things all the time because then you know what goes with what. No, love fashion, love going shopping, love going shopping with my friends, experimenting. I know what I like. I know the kinds of like colours and like dresses and stuff that I like. I can't really tell you how or why I know, but I do. So yeah, I just know what I like and people say it looks nice, so that's good. I also love putting on makeup. I've kind of found ways around putting on makeup that work for me so that I can do it for myself um, because I think that's important to have that independence. I don't wanna be, if I'm wearing makeup and I, cause I love wearing makeup, I don't wanna have to rely on someone to do it all the time cause then I can't have my own freedom. So I've just found ways around doing that. I can't see, but I still absolutely love makeup. Here's how I do my foundation. Couple of pumps on the back of my hand. Grab my damp beauty sponge. Give it a little round and just bounce around the face. Uh, what else? Cooking. I love cooking when I can. It takes a lot of time though. Like sometimes it's very time consuming for me to cook. So if I'm in a rush, I do ask people to help me or if I've had like a hard day sometimes because it takes more energy. But I do love cooking and absolutely can do it. 
I use like various equipment like my mini chopper which chops like onions and stuff for me so I don't have to be doing that. Some vegetables it can chop as well. So this is my mini chopper and I'd like to chop this ginger so I'm going to pop it in here, put the lid on, put the console over this and press it. And here we have the chopped ginger. I have like a hot water dispenser to make my cup of tea because um, I don't really like to use kettles and that's fine. So this is how I make a cup of tea. Pop the tea bag in the cup, put the cup onto the little water tray, making sure this is lined up with the spout, I don't know. Press this and it's gonna boil now. Because I, I don't like using kettles, so this is definitely a great alternative. Just going to wait for the drips. And here we have my tea. And I'm just going to leave it to brew. So yeah, I basically just kind of make my way around you know, find ways around doing day-to-day -day things because I obviously still want to do them, still want to kind of be in that world. Um, but you know, I can't sit here and say, oh yeah, it's like really easy to do everything, like everything is perfect. Of course it's not. And like there are, there are many challenges that I still have to face and find ways around. I think a main challenge for me at the moment is to do with uh, finding work and like employment. So obviously I've spent, well I've spent quite a while in education and kind of, because I'm a musician so I do like freelance gigs and a uh, bit of teaching and things like that. But I actually want to find like a nine to five kind of stable job to go with that. And actually that's proving really difficult. I mean, I know it's hard for everyone, especially with COVID and stuff, but there are some like shocking statistics and actually I didn't know about this until more recently when I finished all of my studies because obviously now is the time when I would be looking harder for work. But it is something like 75% of visually impaired people are out of work. I think that's the right st statistic. And it's something like 90% of employers do not think that a visually impaired person could do the job that they want them to do. So, you know, the, the advertised job. I think that's shocking, actually. I think that is a terrible statistic and there needs to be work. And I know that lots of people are doing amazing work to try and beat this and to, to change it. For example, the Vision Foundation, who are a great London-based charity, have a campaign out at the moment called See My Skills. And they are trying to, yeah, trying to change this attitude and the kind of assumptions that that people evidently have because they need to be broken. Like, of course, I can use a computer. I can do all sorts of things that would enable me to have a really great career. And anyone that's visually impaired probably can. But we kind of get these people just, they won't interview because they already have an idea about what we can and can't do. But obviously, if we went then to an interview, we would they would meet us and they would probably have a completely different experience. So very difficult. I am finding that hard, but you know what? I'm still trying and I'm getting somewhere. So that's good because I think the most important thing is, you know yourself what you can and can't do, you know your limits and you can't give up. So, you know, you just have to keep going with that. So yeah, that is my main challenge at the moment, but all things considered, I think if that's my main challenge at the moment, I'm still quite happy because I'm so lucky that I can do all of these other things and that I've found ways around doing things and that I can lead a pretty much, you know, the same, a similar life to, to people that can see, I, I believe. Like, you know, it's not too much of a difference for me. So that's great, you know, to, ha to only have that problem at the moment is, is a good thing, I think. But yeah, so this has kind of been a whistle stop tour of me, but I just really wanted to post this video on World Sight Day because I wanted to talk about my condition because I haven't really and how I do things basically. And if you have any comments or any questions, you know, if you have any like burning questions about, oh, I wonder how she does this or I wonder how she does that, please do post them. Like, obviously, please be kind. Like, we don't like negativity on this channel. So if you have anything not nice to say, then probably just don't say it. 
But it, honestly, if you have a question, and even if you think it's a silly question, I would completely ask you to post it and I will do my best to answer it because I'm all about just breaking these assumptions, basically. Also, if you have any, like, I don't know, if any ideas of any videos you want to see, like how I do something in more detail, I know I showed, showed a few little clips here, but uh, yeah, if you want more detail or just like a day in my life or something, then please do post that because I will, again, do that for you because, as I said, I'm all about showing these things and trying to raise awareness and just make it not so much a, you know, if you're visually impaired, you're you're different or disadvantaged or there's something not right because I just think in today's society everyone is different everyone has their own little things and that's just my little thing so yeah I just think that I'm definitely all about raising this awareness but I think that's all I wanted to say I don't think I've forgotten anything as I said a bit of a ramble on but hopefully you've picked something up from that and yeah it is world sight day so that's a happy time for me to post this I think and yes, if you like this, please do give it a big thumbs up because I just want as many people to kind of see this as possible. Um, so yeah, the more thumbs up I get, thumbs ups? I don't know. The more thumbs ups I get, the more kind of YouTube will hopefully push this. So yeah, please do that. And as I said, do subscribe to the channel. I will be bringing you more content as and when I can. But all I can say now is have a good day, have a good week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.